Our students, Brian Proctor, the art teacher, back again with another lesson. And this one is the big one. This one's going to help so many of you guys out there who are having this same problem. If you are drawing and your drawings look flat, I'm going to show you how to eliminate that altogether. Never again will you be drawing flat drawings. And I mean never again. Money back guarantee. So yeah, this one is a pretty long video, but it's really, really detailed. And as I said, you will never draw flat drawings again if you watch this. So in the beginning of it, I have a drawing. It's an example drawing that I take and I show you guys what to do with it to make your drawing not look flat. So I keep that up for a few seconds. So if you want to pause the video before the lesson and just draw this as best you can and then just follow along with the steps or you can just watch the whole video, come back, draw it and then do what I say do. You will be a greater drawer, greater, greater, greater drawer than you were before you watched this video. And once you become that great drawer, tell somebody about this video and they can watch it too. So let's go without me rambling. I looked away, I looked away. Without me rambling, let's get into the lesson. I'm back. Our students, take a look at this drawing right here. Take a good look. Now, does your drawing look anything like this? Now I'm going to show you why this drawing looks flat and how to correct that forever. So this is a quick drawing that I did of a ninja. He's jumping in the air and he's throwing his stars. Or you could actually look at it like he fell to the ground and he was stepped on and he smashed into the ground because he's flat. Now I'm going to show you how to get rid of that forever. Now we're going to do this in three phases, three quick phases to show you how to take your drawings, however they are, and not change them to make them look a little more rounder and then change them just a little bit and then just change them a little bit more. Each one of them is very easy and very simple. So the first thing you want to do is, if you have a drawing already, if you look at this, the way the arms and the legs connect, what you have, if you draw your arms like this, like that, and let's say here's the hand. By not creating, um, what's the word I'm looking for? By not creating a separation between the two, not so much of a gap, but just a simple line that's, that tells you that there's a distance between these two, that these two connect in some way, but one is in front and one is in back. So simply taking your drawings and going into the creases and just like this. A little line, simple line like this. Here, here, between the knees, or the knees, between the legs. That alone kind of makes it look like you have these two joints and these two joints are connected in some way. Not just the one piece that's turned that way, but they are now connected. All right, so that would be your first phase right there. It's just by adding a little crease between your joints. Now, the second phase would be rounding things off. Now, let me give you another example. This is still flat because your lines are flat. The way to round things off or to make things look rounder is just simply by rounding them off, rounding your ends off here. And if this was connected to something here, to make it look more rounder and right away you can see by just doing this this looks this goes this looks round going up into there now by doing this we need to work on our cylinders to connect not connect to to separate your two parts so for instance let's do this arm here so this guy he's throwing the stars so because his hand is going to be back back or above you what you're going to see in the cylinder is you're going to see the top of that circle. So if I did like this, the same thing for his sleeve, it would be rounded like that. And right away, you can see it starting to round itself off. Now we're going to do all of them like that, but let's give me, let me give you a, a quick um, lesson in drawing cylinders. And I did a video on that not too long ago. Go back, go into my channel and go back a couple videos and you'll see cylinder so the cylinder is basically 
a rectangle. If you put a cylinder down like that, it's a rectangle. Get my glasses real quick. It's flat on the top, flat on the bottom. I'm getting my handy cylinder. So that's what this is, flat on the top, flat on the bottom. And when you start to move that cylinder, you lift it up or you tilt it down. Let's just say if this was the front, you lift it up or you tilt the front down. You're gonna have that circle. You're gonna have that circle. So if I tilt the front up, you're gonna be able to see inside of it. If I tilt the front down, you're gonna be able to simple see into the back of it. So just remember that. So however you have your arms, let's just say this is my character. This is my torso. This is my delts. And these are my arms. I'm just gonna use one 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 half of the arm. So this is this because this arm is straight down. So if I started to lift this arm up, let me have my little mannequin guy. So if he's if he's up to the challenge because his joints are just jacked up. So we have it here. Arms are straight down. Let's just say this is his this is his body right here. This is his arms. So as he starts to lift that arm up like that. If I could take this hand off, I'm afraid to take this hand off because it might not come back on. It might not go back on. If he starts to lift that arm up, you will start to see this round off. You'll start to see the opening because what you're doing, I'm showing you the inside of that now. It was like this. Now I'm lifting it up. Now I'm showing you the inside of this cylinder. So you're going to be like this. And of course, the back is going to be just as round as this. So the more I lift that up, so let's say I lift this one up more. So I lift this one up here. Here's the back, here's the front. So you have one down, you have one lifted up. So this distance is gonna be shorter as you tilt it up. Let's say if this was, let's say what I don't know, about eight inches, as you go up, you see that eight inches start to decrease the distance. So from here to here, does it still eight inches, but it doesn't look it. And you lift it all the way up. So what we have here is this. So if I brought it up more, you have less and less distance and more and more of a circle. So if I did this, <clears throat> it would be more like this. Like that. So if I took one arm or one part of the arm and I lifted it up, and I took the other part of the arm and I put it on here, which is just a cylinder as well. It's a rectangle until I aim that rectangle at you or aim that cylinder at you. So if I'm coming down just by doing this, and then you put your hand on it, however, let's just say he's holding up a gun, he's holding a gun <clears throat> like that. So it's just cylinders. One cylinder would be in front of another cylinder. Now with this part of the arm, I have noticed that people will kind of extend this arm really long to be able to throw the other part of the arm on. And all you have to do is just draw the right distance and then overlap this arm, this part of the arm over this arm. So my other one, so like instead of coming way down like this, like you have that drawing, you overlap because if it comes, if it's coming to you, you're going to overlap it like that. Hopefully you're understanding that. So what I'm going to do is shorten this arm to about its right length and then just overlap this arm too. Now we're ended up starting to change stuff just a bit, just a bit. But if you have this so far, if you if your drawing was like this, then you're doing pretty good. If your arms and your legs are not way out of proportion and it's not just you know going every which way, then you're pretty good. So what you want to do is if you want to bend somebody's arm, I'm trying to throw my arm in. If you want to bend somebody's arm, you're going to try to have to overlap it. And by having this little crease in there, that makes it seem like it is being overlapped. So we have this, 
bring that elbow in and we'll have this right there. And right away, it, this arm looks like it's on top of this arm, which is what you, what you are looking for, what you are trying to do. Now, also remember, this is round. If this is, is it, if this is in any way, if this is here, if this is in any way coming toward you, you're going to see the opening. If this is in any way going away from you, you're going to see the back. But since you're not going to be able to see the back of that, you want to see just a little opening from here. Unless it is flat against the body. If it is flat against the body like that. Now this is a circle here. This is actually that cylinder. As I said, I would take this hand out, but I'm not sure if I if it'll go back in or not because it's just it's just weird. So unless it's flat against the body, but if it is coming out a little bit, you're gonna make that round. So let's give this guy a little bit of round collar instead of making it flat or sleeve. That's his collar. Just round it off just a little bit. Like that. And you see how it's no longer flat anymore. You, I mean, you already you already have a flat piece of paper and you're drawing flat on a flat piece of paper. So you all have that working against you. So you need these little things to make your, these little tips, techniques to make your drawing become rounded and better, of course. So the same thing with this though, so if you have this leg, say like if this leg is coming up, this leg would probably be in front of it unless he's throwing his leg back behind him. So in order to have that in front, we're going to even take this and we're going to curve this. We're going to curve that because this is a cylinder here. So we're going to curve that. Not all the way across, just that little bit of, of, of pinch in the skin. We're going to curve that. The same thing we're going to do with his boots. And then since that foot is up in the air, just like you see the bottom, you would see the bottom of this. You're going to see the bottom of his foot. So the foot is going to be like that. For this drawing now let's even bring just a little pinch right here where that foot turns up in that boot really simple techniques so since this one is going down this is going to be the opposite way this foot is going down so this little belt strap with his knife is going to be around because if his leg is round naturally his leg is round and the same way you see these little stripes going across they're going across round. They're not flat. Unless you put it straight down, they're flat-ish. But the second you move it or adjust it, these little stripes, which was, was the glue for the paper, they are now round. So if his leg is like that and I put a strap around him, it's going to be exactly the same. So it's going to be round. So you have to remember the body is round, period. Now how much roundness will I put now? You just don't want a little bit of round like that because the body, the leg is round. Like that. So the rounder your, your, your lines are, the rounder your drawing looks. So I could have I could have did a half like that on his leg and it wouldn't look that round. But if I go all the way around like that, that makes it look more rounder. And this is why I'm drawing in pencil today. So the same with the boots. So this is coming down and this is almost coming up at you. It's almost coming up at you. So you won't make the boots round like that. You will have it the opposite way because it's going back. Now, in the beginning, I had a lot of trouble with knowing which direction to put the circle in. Actually, let's do this before I even put that circle in. Yes, it is going back. We're going to round it like that and round off that knee. So the same thing here, we're just going to get a little crease for the foot. And already from the beginning to now, you see how round it is. And I made a copy of that. Where is this little copy to show you guys? Is this a photocopy? 
to you if my camera wants to focus on me. There you go. And by the way, this is a new camera. This, I did this video, half of this video a week ago, and my other camera just messed up. Let's put it this way. It messed up on me, so I had to get a new camera as promised. Now, if you look at it now, you take a look at this leg, and you take a look at this leg right here. You see the big difference between that? You take a look at this one, and then this one. And let's round that knee off. Let's take some of these sharp lines out. It's another thing you want to do. Take some of these sharp lines out. And you see the difference between the two, even the arms. There's a big difference by just doing this. Put the put these little creases in here, these little folds in the skin or folds in the joints. It makes a big difference. All right, let's keep going. Now, let's say these straps on him. These straps across his chest. These little belt straps. All right, I see this camera is not going to be happy with this focus thing. So, the chest, and I'll use this, the chest is not flat, that is round as well. Or the torso is round because you have your, your rib cages shaped like this. Rib cages shaped like that, and you have your ribs. Well, actually it's like this. You have that little sternum piece and you have your ribs like this. So it is round right off the bat. Same way coming around is like this. It's, like that, it's round. So if you had a ball, if you had a ball here, it's gonna go round, and it's gonna go round like that. So when you put straps on your character, your straps are gonna come down on these lines like this. It's not gonna be just flat like that. So we'll round this off. We'll round these off. Just, just rounding it off. That's that's all it is. You want to still have it connected here and here, or stop here and here, and here and here, but you want to just round it to make that character's chest not look so flat. Like that. And then erase. This is why I use the pencil today instead of the red pencil. like that. Now the belt, let's look at the belt. The belt, now that's a whole different story. Now a belt, if you take something, let's take this cylinder. As I said before, if you take one of these lines, this is the other one, I have two. If you take one of these lines here as a belt, if it's flat facing you, it's going to look flat. But if it's, if it's turned just a little bit, you're going to get that roundness. Now let's just say this guy is facing us directly. He's jumping straight at us. So this belt is going to be flat, but what you can do is if it was long enough or if it was wide enough, it would do something like this. And it's going to be exaggerated like that. No, this goes back. I mean, that's really exaggerated. And this would be his, his hips like that. That's kind of hard to explain, but it had to be extremely long, extremely long, like like telephone pole long. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of keep that belt like that, because you can you can narrow it off a little bit here and here and here and here to give it that round round looking roundness look. But if he is up in the air in any way then you would need to do that curve. So since he is jumping, and we're seeing the bottom of his foot, let's go ahead and round that belt off just slightly. As I said, if he's face to face with you, if your eye line was right there, if he jumped up, and this is your head right here, and you're looking right at this guy, that belt would be that way. But I'm, I'm assuming, for when I drew, the head would be right here. This is the head of, of the person he's jumping up at and maybe throwing the stars at. So let's round that belt up since he's above us. Not too much, but just, just a little slight. Just to give him that curve. And then this is straight here. Now the same thing with the, 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 the 80s shorts. You know, every superhero had like the 80s underwear, should I say. We're gonna round that off just a little bit. <clears throat> 
instead of it being straight. So basically all of your straight lines are rounded off in some way. If it's above you, it's going to be rounded going up. If it's below you, it's going to be rounded going down. So for those that didn't see that, if and it's hard to do with a camera. This is straight on. So if it's above the camera, you're going to see the bottom. If it's below, you're going to see the top. Same thing in perspective. Now, let's take these heads out because I don't want them there. <clears throat> And in perspective, if the head was down here and the eye level is here, if he looks up, you're going to see the bottom of everything, the bottom of his, his shorts, the bottom of his boots, except that one is going back under his arms, all of that. So depending on where you are, your view is from that. Now, another thing here is the face. If you look at the face, that face is just crooked. And a lot of people will do crooked faces and not see it. The best thing to do is to, everybody knows how to draw the oval for the face. Do a straight line. If that, if that face is looking at you, do that straight line. If the face is looking straight on at you, do that straight line. If it's looking toward the side, then you do that side line like that, whichever way that direction turns. So what I usually do, I'll straighten this up a little bit more. What I used to do anyway, when I first started, I'll know where my eyes are. You kind of always know where your eyes are. Then... I'll do this. I'll say my chin is going to be this far, this, this, this wide. So then I'll have at this point or this corner where it reaches that, I'll have it curved in like this. Like that. And that way I'll know to keep my face straight. So you always know where you want your nose. So you do a little triangle for a nose. Your mouth is just a little below that. And then your eyes can be either three ways. Your eyes can be either above this line. Depending on the tilt of the head, it can be center of that line. You have this and this. Or it could be below that line. As I said, depending on your head tilt. But that line adds as a guideline. So that your one eye won't be up here and another eye won't be down here. Because you always have that guideline, even going to the side. So if you're doing if you're doing a three-quarters view, you always have this. It tells you where your face is going. You have your eye line. You have your chin. And then from this point to wherever your chin is, and from that point to wherever your chin is, like that. And of course your nose is here. And your mouth is just below that. Now, you don't want your mouth to come way out here. You kind of want to stop it on that line. And then, as I said, you want it wherever your eyes are going to be, if it's going to be in, on the half of it, halfway, above it, or below it. And then you have your face. So you all you know that your chin or your jaw is going to wear on that mouth line, your jaw is going to curve. So it's going to be like this. And right here, this is where it's going to bend right there. Same thing here, here and up. Here and up, here and up. That's just how the face is, is made. So yeah, and your eye line, you know, your ear is going to be your nose to your, your eyebrow, actually. Nose to the eyebrow. So the eyebrow is up here. Your ear stops up there too. Same thing here. Your nose, so this is the side of your face, your nose to your eyebrow. And then you just bring that in, curve that right there. So if I could ink this thing, it would be like this. You have this slope coming down to your eye and in and then down, curve in. Here's your mouth, nose, and your eye. And then you have a straight face just about every time. And then you put your neck wherever you want to put your neck at, and your neck actually comes from behind the ear. And then you have your face every time. And it comes out right. Less crooked. 
So with this one, let's say he is looking at us. If he's looking at us, here's that center line right there. Now you see how this eye is way over here, this eye is way up, and his mouth is crooked. The nose happens to sit perfectly on that center line. So let's get rid of this and get rid of this mouth. Let's get rid of the whole thing. Let's get rid of the whole face. And also, it's hanging off of the neck. So, let's do this again. Let's see, we have this. And if it's hard, and that center face is just like that. If it's hard to do, if it's hard for you to make a line that is centered, do this. Do a square. A rectangle and then center that line that's easy to that's easier to do than trying to do this because you might have something like that your your face might be crooked like that so just draw a rectangle the size of the head that you want do a center line then again do your eye find out how big your chin is like that like that and then of course when you put your mouth you can curve it like that. You just basically you're just chopping that little block up and then you still have your head. It works. So here and here. Like that. And I'll shift his neck over a little bit. Again, eye line. This this and so my nose is going to be here let's put my nose here and my mouth here and since he's hollering we're going to keep him hollering and then put my eye let's put my eye kind of uh, under it like that and then shape the face shape the face of course you have to shape the face it takes these lines out Change my eyes around just a little bit, make them more pointy because he's angry. And then my eyebrow, my evil eyebrow. And then just some of the nose. And some people are drawing eyes, just draw football. You know how to draw football like that. That's all the eye is, just football. So it's just this. And then turn your paper upside down if you have a trouble, if you have a trouble, and this, that's it. Now for a woman, I'll say this, this goes on this line, that goes on that line. If I do a, a female, I'll do this. I'll have these two on that line, but I'll have this one up. And this one comes above, uh, on that same line, and this one comes up too. So this end is going to be above the line, and that's how I do the female, and then I just add the eyelashes. So to so those people that have characters, female characters, like that. And then you have an eye. So remember, they are both on that, that football is on the same line. For the men and for the women, it's going to be above that line. Like so. Making your drawings look better. Okay, so we're gonna shape that face up a little bit more later. And the ear, remember the ear is at the bottom of the nose and the top of the eye. So the ear, you don't have to have big ears. So the ear is just an oval like that and you just chop it off so it's on the side of the face like that. You can have big ears if you want. I mean, it's your, it's your, it's your character. And then the teeth. Black that out. He's hollering. Now, again, the headpiece is straight. Since he's jumping up, you want to curve that because he's over you. So you're going to see the, the bottom, the inside of that cylinder. Man, I'm getting a lot of lines, but it would be much worse if I had my red pen, red pencil. Gonna curve that. And curve that. And then the rest of his head. 
like that. Now let's work with his face. Let's bring his chin down a little bit. Give him some of that bottom lip. Here's his neck and he has that collar and that collar also is going to be rounded too. Now we're going to worry about the hands later. We're, going to, we're not going to worry about too much about the hands. Now he has a little knife on the side of him. You can draw a little weapon on the side of him. With something like that, you'd have to figure out, if I drew a leg, let's get another piece of paper. Well, let's take this guy since I got it. Save me from drawing. If I drew this leg, this is this guy's leg. You want to have a center line down the middle of your leg, right down the middle. So if I had a knife or something strapped to the side of him, how does that leg go? If I had a knife strapped to the side of him, if I turn this leg out like that, you wouldn't see that knife. You really wouldn't see too much of that knife because this pen is big, but if it was a small knife, you wouldn't see it. And I'm, I'm looking at my direction and my, my, you wouldn't see it because it's not on the side of his leg. So if the, what did I just say? It's not on the side of his leg. It's on the side of his leg. It's not on the front. When he bends his leg up and turns it, you won't see it. So there's something you have to think about. So if the center part of the leg, that center line was coming up on that leg, that center line would be right here and then down here because this is the center of his foot. So that would be on the right about here. So you wouldn't really see that knife. So it's just these are just little things to think about because I know you say, oh, I want my knife on my character and I want him to look cool or something. So it would actually be on the side of the leg that you could not see. Now, that's just for just for future reference. But for the for that reason, I'm just going to tilt that knife up. If you can see through his leg, his knife is just tilted up so that you could see part of it. So if you like if you're saying to yourself, oh, he, you have to see that knife. So it would be like that. Just tilt it up. And then it would be cut off. But you wouldn't see it on the side of his leg if his leg was bent because this is the center line right here. It would kind of be like right here going to the knee and then going to center knee straight down to that foot. So just remember that. And that would be the same thing with the arms. If you had that imaginary center line and you go through, where would something look on his arm? Like if I've strapped a little thing to his arm, it wouldn't be right there because as soon as he closed his arm, it would be hitting him right here. So that little pouch or whatever would have to be way on the side and you wouldn't see much of it. Just food for thought. All right, now let's look at these stars. If you're throwing stars at me, if you're throwing something at me, let's take this, this pencil sharpener. If I'm gonna throw this pencil sharpener at you, I'm gonna throw it, it's gonna end up coming at you like this. It's going to spin like this and rotate and come at you. It won't come at you like this. So you have to know how, and I just emptied my pencil sharpener out on here. You have to know your shapes again. So these stars would not be facing you like they're just laying on the ground. You would have to do more of an oval like that to kind of look like they're spinning, coming towards you. Now, if they're spinning, you really wouldn't see the um, actual points of it, unless you drew just like multiple points inside the, the, the actual circle itself to look like something is spinning. Let's get rid of this. Something like that, some weird like shape like that where you just kind of like, it's blurred and you see all the points coming at you. It's like a Frisbee. You don't throw a Frisbee coming straight at you. You throw a Frisbee sideways. So let's say if this had a point in the center, it would be something like this. Point. And I'm just drawing lines just to, to make it a little faster. So it would be like that. So it does not look like they're flat on the ground and he's like stomped into the mud or something. 
Now, again, the body is round, just like the belt. So the chest, if you do the chest, the chest would be round like that, which I never drew the chest on it, which I meant to do that, but I did do the stomach muscles. So stomach muscles, instead of drawing a little L like this on an upside down L, it's still going to be, it's going to be curved. It's going to have some curve to it. Another thing is the stomach, if you have your torso, here's your chest, there's that center line, here's your rib cage. We already, I already showed you about the rib cage. So your stomach is not going to be straight down like this. It's not going to be straight down. It's going to come in. All right, let me finish drawing this. Here's your hips. Here's your hips. Here's your what is that? Not your waist. Is it the waist? I don't know. I'm, I'm lost right now. Here's this part. Here's this is your this is your hips. This is your waist. Now here, let me get rid of some of these lines. You have your obliques, which is basically your love handles. That fat on the side of you, and it's right here. Your obliques and that fat is right here. Shaped like that. So your stomach muscles or your abs are going to go out. It's going to go in kind of like this. Um, so many lines. It's going to go in like that. And that's an exaggeration. It's going to go in. And then you have your obliques on the side like that. But don't worry too much about muscles until you get them right. Don't try to put every muscle because you can have a great drawing and then you try to put muscles in there and your muscles are so crooked you screw up your great drawing. Now we're going to get into that in the next phase of, of this drawing, but don't worry about that. But I'm just saying for the time being, when somebody draws muscles coming down, it comes in. So it comes in. And because as I say, this is round, your muscles, the shape of your muscles are going to come round as well. Not straight across. It's going to curve in because this whole thing is curved. So follow that curve and you curve up. Follow that curve and curve up. And you have your muscles. Now, what was it in? So we had the, we had the flat, the face is round. We have this is round. And I was putting, there was a symbol on here. Because I did this earlier. I did this whole lesson. And it just screwed up because of the camera. So I'm redoing it again. I had a symbol on this guy's forehead here. And I'm looking at the old one. And... Yeah, those are the two. Yeah, okay, so I don't want to show you the old lesson because it's, the old lesson is kind of almost finished. It's almost finished. Now, one more thing. I'm, I'm looking at this. These little straight straps. These, If this is cloth, it's not going to be straight like a board. So let's put like a little S in there. Let's curve these. Like, just do it like a, like a letter S. Something like that. And then follow. And then put a bend in here. That way it gives you that flowing motion. And you can make these straps as long as you want to. Back in the, in the, in the um, image days, they would have these things going way back here. Just, you know, just incredibly long flowing. So it's like the women's hair back in the days. The hair would be way down to the ground, dragging on the ground. I mean, it looks good. It looked pretty, but, you know, just was not really realistic or sanitary, actually. So, do that. Let's get rid of some of these extra lines, and I'm going to ink this after we get to the next phase. So, that's done. That's done. You can see once again where is my photocopy. You can see the far cry from this to this, and it didn't take long, just a few extra lines. Okay, so we're going to continue on, and we're going to get to the hands in the next phase. All right, so next phase, I guess it would be phase three. Phase one was the lines, phase two was the circles, phase three is gonna be the muscles. Now, as I said, don't try to draw the muscles. If you are not, if you have not mastered the muscles and how they look when you change it or flex it or bend it or whatever, please do not draw the muscles. Please do not try to draw the muscles. If you can draw, the shape of the muscle, the shape, not the muscle itself, but the shape, the shape where it comes out, 
where it goes in, where it comes out, where it goes out and comes back in. If you can do that, that's perfect. That is perfect because you always have plenty of time to learn exactly how the muscles go when they twist. So you have your delts. I need new paper because I keep going back to this paper. This paper. So we have this. Let me use my pen. Use my big pen. You have this. You have your collarbone that goes across there. Look in the mirror. Take your shirt off. Look in the mirror. Then you have your delts, which is that top muscle right here. So this top muscle right here, your delts. Then you have your arms going in. That's part of your arm anyway. Going into there, you have this curve, and then you have this other curve. So the same thing, that and that. And if you look at that arm, you say, oh, that's a muscular arm. Because it's not like this. That's not a muscular arm. But when you just add the curves to it, it looks good. You don't have to try to get every muscle just right. It's like, oh, he's got this bicep, and he's got the veins coming out of there. And you have the split right here, and you have this other part here. You don't need to do all that because I can do just do lines, just and it would be just messed up because you're like, what is what what is going on there? Is that part of his costume? Or is it just he got veins? Is he a demon or something? But if you just know where to curve, where to curve again, and where to curve again, you have a muscular character. Maybe just add one, just a bit of a line. That's all you need. That's all you need. So don't try to do muscles until you actually learn the muscles. So we got your delt here, the circle here. And I was going to show you by doing it. You have your delt, which is a circle. You have your, your um, cylinder and you have your other cylinder here. So this is always going to be round because that circle's there. Depending on how your arm is turned up, your bicep is going to come out. This, your forearm, is going to be thick here and go to thin like that. And then same thing here. So you're going to have this bicep or this, this delt. The bicep is here, which is rounded. And this is going to be thick to thin. Not trying to make this ninja a bodybuilder. But just by adding that little bit of shape there has muscularized him greatly so we're coming up with the chest here we're going to have this lump here this here and then this here like that same thing with the legs the legs will be a little thicker Hence the fact that you would not be able to see the, the knife or the sword. It's going to be thick here. You can leave that. It's going to be kind of rounded. It's going to be thicker here. Or more of a, a, a lump here. And then give this more of a curve to it as well. Your calf is going to be curved out. So basically, any way you had a straight line, you're going to curve that line out somehow. or even in like that. So let's put all these back. As I said, you don't want no big pop of muscular ninja because you really don't see muscular ninjas. And let's bring his waist in a little bit just by curving it in a little here because you don't want, you don't want a flat, you don't want this flat like that. So what you want to do is curve it in because you have this part right here, your, your um, rib cage like this. Your skin is going to come cover this and it's going to go in right up until you get to that uh, oblique right here, which is this. And then that goes down there and then you have your part of your, your buttocks. All this is your buttocks and then your legs actually come up and go into there. This goes down into your crotch. And then your muscle, your, your abs. So yeah, and don't make fat obliques, don't, because you see that, don't, don't do that. Make, kind of make, keep that straight, keep that straight. So you just want to come in, remember that the rib cage is like this, it's going to come in and then go down to your, your waist or your love handles. 
So that takes care of rounding off your muscles. As I say, learn your muscles more before you try to, to, to do those cuts in those muscles. Learn them, and then once you got them, then you can do that. But like I say, you can take a good drawing and screw it up by saying, oh, I think a muscle goes here, and a muscle goes here, and there might be a muscle here, and there might be a muscle here, and there's a muscle here, and you're like, what? Somebody sees it, it's like, that's pretty good, though. <laughs> Somebody sees that, it's like, okay, you, what is what is all that going on? Especially if you have a nice colorful costume the, with um, gadgets, just rely on that color and the gadgets to take the mind off the muscles. Somebody can see the muscle, won't see the muscle. All right, now let's just say that this guy's got clothes on. How do you not make it so skin tight? Now, number one, you did this, this crease in here. It kind of helps to define that not being so skin tight. Another thing you have is your, your not collar, your, your sleeve, whatever, your cuff there. But anytime you bend something like this, you're going to have like these wrinkles in it. And I had my, this, this, I use this for the other video. If you have something skin tight and you bunch it together, and I didn't like because it wouldn't it wouldn't go, and you push it together, you're gonna have kind of an up, down, up, and a down effect to it. So let me do this. Alright, so let's say this is an arm or a leg or something. This is just straight, your straight uh, uniform, your skin tight uniform. But the second that you bend it, you see how it has this little you almost and it goes you have an you have an up an in or oh, up and a down and up and a down it's always going to be like that when you when you have some kind of a bend in your uh fabric i mean it's it's a, it's a little it's a, it's a lot to take in right off the bat but you could just do a couple extra creases so remember you have your up down up down and most time that's just like a u it's like a u if you do this letter or this kind of like a U shape, and then you have your outer part. So it's gonna go up over here, down in here, up over here, like that. Don't really try to do too much of it until you learn it, but this is just for people that just want, just to show that this guy is not like skin tight clothes on. So you just do that, and maybe just a little bit in there to show that there's a crease in there. Same thing when it pulls. When it pulls, you're gonna have pull lines like that just a couple pull lines like that because his arm is going up and it's pulling same thing here we'll go to here just a couple so that's a v you can have the u like that or you can have the v for a really tight tight um compressed fabric same thing here uh at the leg so this leg will be jumping so you could be like pulling right here not too much bending at the knee so that's going to be here get that little u there same thing here and as i say not a lot but it's just enough to show that oh that he's wearing fabric this guy's wearing some type of fabric so from here because his leg is coming up it's compressing all of this material here so you want this this maybe that like that and then maybe over here not too much of course that was the little v here and then uh just just for laughs just pull it's good it could pull right here at the, at the arm going into the stomach okay now let's talk about some detail now in order to make a plain picture look a lot better and i did a video on this Whatever gadgets a person has, put detail in that gadgets. Look up like reference material for like straps. How would his straps be? Just add a little detail to his straps somehow, some way. Let's just say like that. And it just it just makes the drawing pop out more because you'll see people will see how much time you spent designing whatever the the um detail in the costume let's say his belt let's put let's put the symbol on his belt as well and then maybe he has something over here some little gadgets or something but 
the more detail you put into the costume, the better it looks. And you can see already it's like, oh, okay, it, just, it stands out more. And you can put, I don't know, whatever. You just don't, don't, don't really overdo it though. Don't go crazy, just, you know, some, some detail into it without going too crazy. Now, the hands, and what I want to do is I want to draw this because let's just say this was the this was the image you had to draw and you could not really change the face or you couldn't change the position and it had to stay like this so I'm gonna show you a couple things to do to give it a little more action and just put some eyes in here just because I can like that okay hands let's talk about hands the best thing to do for hands is if you're trying to draw a picture, look at your own hands. Look at your own hands and then see how my hands would be. So like if he's throwing something, he's like throwing the stars at you. He's not going to be like this, like he's throwing confetti. His hand is going to be turned to the side. So if I throw a knife or something at you, you keep uh, throw it at you, it's going to be more to the side. If my fingers had to open up, it would be more to the side. So the hand is, when you first look at the hand, the hand is a square. The hand is pretty easy, but it's hard as hell. So it's to the side. You see the square right here. This is this. Then you have your fingers, okay? And this is really quick. So this square, if you have this square and then you turn the square to the side, it's going to be more like that. And then you have your fingers. Depending on how your fingers are going to be and depending on where your thumb is, if your thumb is over here, and then this goes to this part of the palm. So it's for me to turn it upside down. Basically, if you draw this one whole section connected to this, the baby finger, and then, yeah, you're all right. You can tell the difference between the two. So if I did this, and of course, I have hand videos. We'll teach you guys how to draw hands. You have two parts of the, the, the palm. The palm is like this. You have this fat piece, and then you have this other piece that actually kind of goes up to the baby finger. Like that. And then your thumb comes out here. So once you learn these two, to separate these two, the rest kind of gets a little easier for you. And then it goes up, kind of like down. You have your, this finger comes straight up. This straight up off this line. It doesn't come off of that line. It comes straight from that line. So don't have something like this. And the other finger, the, your, your pointer finger goes way out here. No, it doesn't. It connects with that line. And you have this one, and then you have that one. So, and then you have your little lifeline. But I don't, I don't worry about that too much. So if you turn it and you keep these on the same line like that, you might see some palm here, or the palm, and then you have your thumb. And then you just figure out where you want to place your other fingers. As I said, just, you can, you can, you can look at your own hand. So pretend you're throwing a ball or a knife or whatever and then see how your hand lands. So from this one, <coughs> you just want to turn that more to the side. Like that. I'm not going to change this too much because I'm going to do a, a, another drawing of this and show you what I did compared to this masterpiece, which is very good looking compared to what I'm going to do and show you how to give it a little more action. So you turn that to the side and then maybe bend the fingers because the fingers are up. So let's bend them a little bit to give like he threw something. And it just gives it a little better motion to it. I mean, I could do a hundred different things with the hands. That's why I say the hands are hard. They're easy because the structure is square and then these little cylinders. And then when you twist it, it's still kind of, it's like more of a rectangle. And then these still these little cylinders, but where do the cylinders all fall into place? Where do they fall into place in doing something? Whether you're holding a ball or whether you're holding a pencil, you just have to, this is going to stay square-ish, square-ish. This little piece is going to stay square-ish, you know, for eternity it's just where the fingers land and it's always it comes downhill you just got to know it comes when you bend them it goes downhill look at the video that i did on, on hands and it explains a little better and the same thing with this one so instead of having it just like against his chest or against his stomach like that you want to turn it a little bit you want to make that more flatter like this 
where you will see the fingers differently. I just twisted it to the side. And this is like a rough, where you probably won't see that thumb. And that uh, last one there, you see that palm. Yeah, he's kind of like rubbing his belly now. So from here, I'm, I'm looking at everything I did in the first one. Let's round this foot off. Let's not have this foot in such a point. Round that off a little bit, give him a little heel. And then just kind of like round that off a little bit too. And there. So a far cry from the first one. Now where's that first one at? If you started out like this and you did these little tips that I showed you, you should now have that. So from here, I'm going to show you guys how to put more, a little more action into this particular pose. So let me do this real quick. I'm going to try to do a speed drawing. I am going to do a speed drawing. Not speed drawing. I'm going to actually draw it and, and show you guys. All right. All right. I'm going to use my red pencil. Hopefully you guys can see that because I always use my red pencil. That's just how I roll. Okay, camera. Do your focus thing. Do your focus thing. See, this is a new camera. The other camera had a focus lock. So it would lock. So no matter what I did, it would stay locked on that particular focus. So if I put my hand up or whatever, it wouldn't change. So this is the picture that I'm seeing. So I'm going to draw that. First of all, I'm going to draw the whole entire thing and keep it inside. What, are you, what did you just unfocus on me, bro? Come on, come on. Come on. I got a live audience here. Do me right. All right. Again, if my, if my camera wants to stay focused on me, maybe it doesn't like all that white paper. So let me just start drawing. So first of all, you want to keep your drawing on your paper. You want to, you don't want to go. And before I always say, use your edges, you make some, some edges, but I'm not going to do that. So if I'm drawing this or any picture, I'll start out with the torso, start out with the torso. That's my oval or circle. Now I'm sorry if you can't see this yet, you'll see it later. Torso. Then since, uh, I'm going to, center line which direction the torso going and i may make that correction later here's my upside down mountain and if this is your first time at to my channel you kind of won't understand what i'm saying but you have to check out my videos and you'll understand but my all my art students understand here's my tuna can my upside down house right there this is going to be He's going to be tilted because he's throwing something up. So that, that uh, collarbone, that whole shoulder is going to be tilted like that. Here is the ball. Here is the other one. Now, here's my chest. Here is the line here. So we're doing the beetle. Like that. And this is just a rough sketch, and I'm going to get that later. So once I get the beetle done, I'll have the neck, which is that, that V. And then I will have my head here. Now, this thing should focus in a minute. Focus! So I don't think it, I think it's trying to picture this and this at the same time. So this arm might go off. It might make may go off. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. So we're going to have this one leg. Now, if he's jumping toward me, what I want to do is I want to put this leg up. Put this leg up more. So what I have is my oval, and this is just, it could be a cylinder if you can't do the oval. I'll do one at a time, one, and I'll get this length right, and then I'll do the other one to get that length right as well. Then I'll say, okay, that's not right. That's too thick or too thin or whatever. And then I'll, then I'll go from there. So with this one, same thing here. Let's just say, get this right, get this length right. What I want. And then I'm going to put this leg behind here. Now, right off the bat, I'm seeing, and I'll get to that later. Let's get this leg. And then let's just say it's foot here. So I'm going to bring that foot up more. 
like that. Now, this is just general shape. Now, what I want to do here is because I don't, I'm not liking this twist. I'm number one. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring him down by having the collarbone straight across. It's eye level, but I want to bring his head down. He's gonna lean toward me. So to lean a character, you have to take this straight line and you turn it into this diamond here. It's like this little diamond because the neck falls onto the, it starts right here at the collarbone. So this is where my neck is going to start right here and it's going to go up, which is going to bring my head down now. So let me get rid of that. Because a lot of people always draw straight. They draw it straight across, which means their shoulder height, the shoulder is like right there, eye level, instead of bending somebody down. So if somebody came and they was going to attack you, they would bend down to kind of charge you. Now, when I when I bend this down, you see how this the collarbone came into this little V shape and it goes back here. So if you straight up and down, it's going to be straight across like that. So the more you have this V shape or diamond shape, which is a V, the more he's coming towards you, so the more the head. So if it had a head on it, the head would be right here. So the chin of the head would be like right up in here, down here. So whereas if I lean it forward, his chin would be way up here. So the chin actually comes down into the body. So the more that I put, I could put his chin. Let's do this in pencil just to show you guys while I'm while I'm doing it. There is my pencil. So if I put the chin way down here. Like that, his head's way down in his body. He's bending down a lot. He's like kind of rushing at me. So the lower you put this head into the body, the more he's bent over and the more V you would have to have for his collarbone or that more diamond. So let's do this. Let's do this because this is, this is, there's something about this that's like vexing me, this position. <clears throat> so if he's throwing something, Gonna come up and probably back, and you notice how I do the 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 uh, right away. That way, I'll know which direction the person's arm is going, which which direction that cylinder is going. So I'm gonna run out of space with this, and then this one. Instead of having it down on his stomach, I'm going to have it. Let's say his hand is gonna be right here, and this is something I do when I'm drawing a lot of times. Because it's hard for me to figure out a position unless I know what the person is going to do. If somebody says, oh, just draw this, I'm like, I don't know what position to put them in. Unless I have a reason in my head to have that position. So one thing you can do is you know where you want your hand. Okay, if you know where you want your hand and you know where your shoulder is, that's a given. This is never going to move. And you want your hand here. So now the hard part is connecting the other two. So wherever your hand is, you know you're going to have to have your arm here. Somehow, some way, I'm gonna to have to have the arm here, whether it's gonna be down or up or wherever. And then what's left is the space for your bicep and tricep. And of course, like I say, it's gonna go behind this because this one is in the front. So if you actually shape it right, as I say, without even trying to draw the muscles, if you shape it right, then you're good to go. So doing this, what I just did here, that is, if you take a ball, if I took a ball, and I actually have a tennis ball, if I take this ball here, and I put this cylinder on it, what was I going to say? Depending on where that cylinder is hooked on it, it determines that shape that it's going to take. So if this is the arm here, this is the ball. This when it comes out like this, it comes out kind of like this, and then the other arm part of the arm comes out like this. It's gonna come across like this. So you're not gonna have that long piece. Remember, it shortens out the more you bring it up, and then you're gonna have this piece connected. But the thing is, this is gonna be a ball here. How is this connected to that ball? It has to be round. So and this is becoming a long video. So if I did this like this can you see that this would be my cylinder like he right here connected to that ball it's just behind here that's all
And the same thing with this. Here's a ball here. So you have to connect that cylinder to it because it's going up. It's going up. Now the one thing that is perplexing me is that the higher you put the arm up, and these things are good, but they, they still lack something. Because when you put this arm up, this collarbone is not going to go up. That's the that's one of the, the drawbacks of this. Other than that, this is this is a beautiful thing to have. But as I say, there are some drawbacks to it. And then the joints kind of get really crazy. So if his arm, what do I have? Do I have anything? If this was the collarbone, chest, stomach, this is the arm. So if this arm goes up, if he's throwing something with that arm, he's raising his hand in class or whatever, his collarbone is going to go up into that ball here, which is that delt here, and then it follows suit like that, which means that chest comes like this. The chest is connected to that. The chest is connected to all of this. So this chest would actually go like that. It would pull because this is pulling. That chest would pull as well. That muscle from that chest would pull as that arm goes up. So this one would stay the same shape, but this one would just, it would just pull up like that. So it's going to be like this. And it's going to, because of that, it's going to go behind here like that. And this is kind of like, goes around. Let's see if we have this blue. You see the blue. It's going to be shaped like a cup. A hollow out cup like that. That's your, your delt. And your arm sticks inside of it like that. So you wouldn't see this. So it would be shaped like this. And your arm would stick in it in there like that and you would see just a little bit of this remaining part coming around and then you'd have your shoulder and of course let's say that V for your neck and then your head would be here. So let's keep that. Don't, don't unfocus on the camera. So now when I get the basic shape then I'll just go ahead and cut this and then ink the whole thing. So the arm is going up so it's a chest, so it goes up and right off of the shoulder where the shoulder ends, that's where that delt starts, right there. And then your arm is going to come there and then your chest is going to come down like that. So let me erase the rest of this. Remembering that this guy is leaning, he, he is leaning forward. And then his arm is there. Always drawing that oval or that cylinder, whichever it is, whichever is easiest for you. And it comes down and then it goes into the lats. So is this going to be stressed or is it going to be the other way around? Okay, since he's leaning this way, this is going to be a pinch right in here. It's going to come down, pinch, and then that one. And this is going to be elongated. This is going to be a round part like that. That gives a little more motion to it. And it comes down and we have this. And I always use three colors. Some people use it as, why do you use three colors? And that's why, because when I have so many rough drawings, or so many rough lines with the red, I'll say to myself, oh, this is the line that I want to use right here. I'll use this one right here. But then if I add something on top of that, I'll go back and I'll put blue on that. So then I'll, I'll know all my finished lines and then I'll come back and ink it. So the only problem with a pencil is the pencil gives so much glare from where I'm sitting. So that's why I use red because it doesn't give me the glare and I can't see what I'm doing. Now, let's get rid of all these other lines. And this video, I, I, when I first planned this video, I was going to do like a, at least 30 minute video, but there's a lot of information in drawing. So, and that's good because if you went to school and you had like a 10 minute class, you'd come out dumb as wet dirt. And then of course the hand is going to be to the side. Like that, because he threw the, through the stars. And I'm, and I'm at this point where I can't see what I drew because of the, the glare from the pencil. And this one so this is his thing so we're going to put his head right here now depending on how low you put drop the head you might not see some of the neck but from here i'm going to see just a little bit of neck so i think that's looking like what i want it to look like dealt here is dealt here 
And that head might be a little crooked. Looking at it in the monitor, I can shift the head over a little bit. Now I'm just being picky. Remember, center. And if I want the head straight up, the eyes will be there, straight across. But if I want the head tilted, then I'll turn the eyes. I'll curve that to turn the eyes where you can see more of the top of the head than anything else. But he's not going to be looking down. He's going to be looking at you. So it's going to be somewhat straight coming on. So we'll fix all of this. Bring that out a little bit more. As I said, just learning the shapes, just learning the shapes without having to put all the muscles. So the leg actually comes in like this. The leg comes in, goes up, in, and like that. That's the actual shape of your leg. So that what's left is you, you have your crotch left. So this is the same thing. It is a curve like that. Because you notice how I put this little dip. I always use that because there is like this little dip in your leg, your muscle like that. But that's just a me thing. That's just a me thing. So if you guys has his little 80 shorts on, it's going to be like that. 80s underwear, as I call it. Kind of like that. And of course, this part is going to be in front of that leg, so you won't see that calf. And it's going to be like that because it's up and then you have the foot. Bottom of the foot there. And then that little crease right there. You have that crease in here. You have this crease down in here. Calf starts way back here. So it comes through the leg and then down. And then you have the rest of the leg. There's that turn right there. And then the bottom of the foot like that and then before I ink this I usually stop and as I tell people stop walk away from your drawing and then come back in a few minutes later and then you can see where something needs to be bigger something needs to be smaller or longer or whatever because if you stay and you just draw something all the time you just keep drawing and looking at it your brain is like oh yeah that's good that's good that looks right that's look that looks right it's like typing something. You, you type it and you type it and you type it and then you won't see your errors until you go back and reread it. You're like, oh, how did that get there? So, okay, nose, you have this, that. I'm using my blue. Just to show you guys again. My mouth is here. So my chin turns right here. My jawbone turns right here. Provided it's a man. If it's a woman, it's much different. So my eyes are going to be, I'm going to say my eyes are going to be under it or eh, under over. Something to that point. And your ears. Because the head is tilted down a little bit more, the ears are going to go up. And then my head. So because the head is round, remember my headband is going to be round. Like that. My chest a little bit more. My stomach, my waist, my belt. Round that off. And last time I did that, I completely forgot about his straps. Now, sometimes when you, uh, it's hard to do a couple things, like you figure, but if he's wearing a cape or some clothes, it covers up a lot of, a lot of, you know, mistakes. Like if I was not, if I was doing armor, I wouldn't have to worry about how the muscles go because that armor would cover up a lot of the, the muscles. So I wouldn't have to worry about it. And then his symbol which this needs to be over more because it does not cover his symbol and because this is scrunched, scrunched together it's going to be thin here and then widen out there which pushes the symbol over and we got 
this, we got that, and we got that. Now let me just go over the hands real quick. Usually when, do, when I do hands, a quick thing for me to do with hands is, especially if I'm doing that one, I use my square somehow, some way, I use my square, and then I put my fingers, just two bends, one, two, one, two, one, two. And that's my quick hand. So then I'll come back and I'll just add the extra meat to that bend. And then I have a hand and I just curve the palm off like that. And if I want to get really detailed, I'll do my little knuckles and come down. And if, if need be, if I need to see a piece of thumb, the thumb will be over here. If not, the thumb could be in here where you can't see it. And then there's the arm. So whatever, and then I'll shorten it. You know, I'll come back and I'll shorten it because this finger's not as long as that. So but whatever, however, I turn my hand, whatever I'm doing, I'll do this part first. I'll do this part first. So, and I can't think of anything else to do right now. <laughs> I'll just do the square somehow first, and then I'll say, okay, how I want my hand, and then I'll, I'll just, like I said, I'll just do this, I'll do my fingers, and, the, and fingers are just like stick things, and then of course I'll say, I'll come back, and then I'll just add a little meat to that, meat to those fingers. Well, since it's going to be overlapping, start with a small finger, and go to this one. And go to this one, and then this one right here, and then you have your palm here. And then remember this little palm. If it's facing you, if this is closest to you, then you do this little piece, and the other piece is way over here. And then you just do your thumb, however your thumb is supposed to be hooked up to that. And that's my quick rough hands, and then later on when I come back with the finished product, then I'll, I'll, re I'll redo it right. But that's just easy, just, just square somehow. However... You know, you however you want to do your hands, you do your little square, and then you put your fingers in accordingly to whatever. So, yeah. And then your thumb is going to go, you know, here. And yeah. However, you do your fingers. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I have that. So, let me go ahead and I'm, I'll cut it now. And then when you'll see it, it'll be finished. And I'll, cause I'll stop and check, make sure everything. So as I said, I'm doing the hands. Here's my square, and then here's my fingers, like that. So you'll see it. All right. So in the next split second, you'll see the finished product. Let me get this out the way, and you will see the finished product. All right. So here we are with the final product. So you started out with this, and your flat drawing with your points and curves then you went to this where you added some creases you rounded stuff out uh you you put grid on things and straighten it out and then which is a really good drawing and then we go from this to this 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 which is basically your final product so once you figure out what you want and once you draw it a couple times you can go back and you can draw into it. And another thing that I did here was when you put something in front of something, just like you put this arm in front of the chest, you put like one of the throwing stars in front of the leg, it gives you more, puts your drawing more in depth. So yes, if I can get all three on one shot in one page, then you can see what you were working with. Come on, don't crease up. I hate when paper creases up like that. So these are your three. So as I said, if you started out like this by doing simple things that I showed you, you can increase to this. And then later on, once you learn how to do the muscle and uh, do a little more foreshortening, you could end up with this. So I know this was a long lesson, so hopefully you did get something out of it. Let's put this one there because it's like a progression. And then, um, yeah, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this one. If you stayed with this whole thing, and one thing I know you learned something so leave a thumbs up leave a comment and uh, on some things that you might want to do you let me know what you want to do and then um, hit the notification bell so that you know when I get up a new video and as I said I'm sorry for taking so long but this my camera went out and this is a new camera so hopefully when I get into editing it's gonna look all right okay so that's it for this video and I will see you guys in the next one